John Kime covers uh, the Washington Redskins for the Mothership, kind enough to join us this morning. John, you have to come up with new business cards. <laughs> There's a lot of things that we're going to have to come up with here. It's, it's going to be very weird because you go for, I've covered this team for a long time. And so people ask me, like, what do you do? I cover the, I write about the Washington Redskins. Now it's going to be like, well, what do you write about? The Washington who? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be very, very different and take some getting used to for a lot of people. Why now? Well, I think you can go back to the George Floyd death at, at, while in police custody and go and start from there because we've all known for a while that there was pressure on this team to change the name for a while and it wasn't really going anywhere. The, the pattern in the past was whether the storm get to the quiet part and just, you know, survive the controversy. Well, after that point, we all saw what was happening in society and the, 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 the protests, the riots, statues coming down, um, you know, very, you know, flags, you know, the Confederate flag um, not being flown anymore at NASCAR and all that. So I think that led to sponsor or to groups feeling like there was a window open of opportunity that had never existed before. And then they started going after sponsors. And once you start doing that, then, as you know, that's when you get things done. I think that's been the difference here. When it came out that Adweek had done a story about the letter um, that investors and shareholders sent to PepsiCo, Nike, FedEx, when that came out, I talked to somebody who had worked for this place for a while, knew the situation well, and his response was, holy crap, this is different. Yeah, it feels different. And uh, by all accounts, uh, the reports are that they're going to change the the name this morning. What are the options that you've heard? And I'll give you my logic of what I think it's going to be. Well, I think the one that kind of jumps out right away is Warriors, only because Dan Snyder used to, when when he first bought the, the Redskins, he also bought the rights to an Arena Football League franchise team if they came to Washington. He went, then wanted to trademark the name Warriors, he even had some logos designed. I think it was a spear on the helmet and all that. So if the name is changed quickly, that to me would be the leader in the clubhouse. Now, as far as like, I know that there are some, you know, and uh, Ron Rivera has said, and I think others there, I know that there's some other names that they might like. That's the only one that I think I know for sure would be an option. I think if you talk to fans, the name that they jumped on lately is Red Wolves. And I actually did a little Twitter poll last a couple of days ago. I think it was like almost 17,000 votes and more than 40% wanted Red Wolves. So I think Red Tails was a name that was discussed. I don't know that they go in that direction. One of the things I think that was important to them was initially wanted to maintain some connection to Native Americans, but also the military and maybe war. That's why I keep leaning toward warriors. I don't know that for sure, but that's where I lean. I thought that something that started with an R, therefore you could keep the script right. R that the Redskins have right. and keep a little bit of that tradition, but Red Tails right. or Renegades or Red Wolves would be where I would lean. What do you think of that logic? Yeah, and I think that's I think there's some definite logic there because one of the things that they also want to do is maintain some traditions. I was told that the plan as of now is to keep the burgundy and gold colors, big part of the tradition. Another part is the marching band. And then also they love the phrase, H, the fans love the phrase HTTR, hail to the Redskins. So if you, you can maintain some of that and, and I think you can get that. So yeah, that's, I can see that as well. I think Warriors, again, I still lean toward that, but I think your logic is correct. And then you could come up with the logo that has a script on the helmet. Yeah. And if you're a fan tuning in and you don't know the name has changed, maybe you can forget for a minute if, you, if it was that important to you that, it still is still the same franchise you're rooting for. How does this go wrong? <laughs> I've covered this team for a while. <laughs> a lot of things can always go wrong. Um, I think I think the way it could go wrong is if you rush into a branding situation with the logo. I don't think you want to rush into that. And when I've talked to people about that, that process takes a long time. I think that's the important thing to get right here is what is that logo going to be like? Don't rush it. There has a feel of a fire aim ready to this in part because of the way this is all unfolded. This isn't something that going into the offseason, Dan Snyder had a plan on doing. It was kind of forced upon him for whatever reason, because like we talked about earlier. So I think if you rush it, that's where you can get into trouble. This is a monumental thing. And you know like how sports fans are with these teams. And you also know that in 15, 20 years, 
Whatever you decide now is what people will identify with. So take your time and get it right. Yeah, my whole thought with this is it's always the bottom line. It's about money. Even the memo they sent out starts with thanking, you know, sponsors, fans, community in that order, John. And then I think of this as Daniel Snyder can still say to his loyal fan base, I tried, but I couldn't. They wouldn't allow me to keep it. And you get this whole revenue stream of new mem- you know, merchandise here. So I think Daniel Snyder is going to do well with this. Um, you know, Go kicking and screaming, sort of. But also, hey, now all of a sudden I got a whole new revenue stream that I never thought I was going to be getting. Yeah, and I think that's what people have long been trying to tell him, those who wanted to change years ago, that you can benefit financially from this. Now, Obviously, there's going to be a cost involved. You're going to have to change changing all the signage, the merchandise, everything is going to be probably more than $10 million. So there's going to be a cost. But, you know, you're going to get fans like I've heard from fans who say, I won't root for this team again. I think it's a small percentage, Mm. but that group group exists. I also wonder, Dan, too, who jumps on board with this? Because there are a lot of people in this in the Washington area the last few years. They haven't exactly been flocking to games here because the team, it's not about the name. It's about the team not being good. Maybe with the new name comes some new energy for some people um, who were maybe not on the on board with it before. So I think that that there is a potential. And you may have people who say, "Hey, because they changed it, now I'm going to support them. I'll go out and buy the gear." And that's why I go back to the logo and the branding. If you get that right, you can really cash in in that regard. John, thanks for joining us. I know it's a busy time for you. We appreciate it. Hope you're well. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. That's John Kime. He covers uh, the Washington whoever for uh, the mothership.